Hello everybody watching out there on YouTube and welcome to All-Star Break here for Season 10 in an SCRA Walmart Cup Series. I'm Levi McIntyre aka Thrashmaniac99, the voice of in an SCRA Walmart Cup Series, here to welcome you to Dragonette Super Speedway as we get set for our 10th annual All-Star Break beginning with the All-Star Open. 10 laps of racing in a Demo Derby-esque race where basically no cautions are allowed. It's all about where they finish and who survives. So, let's look at how the lineup is for today's race. Starting in the last row is Carson Scott. Starting in the top ten is Mason Powers on the pole with Emmanuel Hartnett right next to him. Row two is Dylan Poteet, Chris Michaels. <coughs> Excuse me. Row uh, three is Austin Mongold, Carson Gum. Row four, Nick Alton, Kyle Keith. And then row five, Matt McIntyre and Tanner Sullivan with identical lap times. So, basically how this All-Star Open is going to be different from the ones in the past is basically instead of it being top two or three that advance, it's going to be top five that advance to the All-Star Race after this. So, with that being said, let's get the command to fire engines to kick off All-Star Break. Drivers, start your engines! <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> As we wait the cars to get rolling for our half a pace lap. This is the biggest all-star open field I think we have ever had. There are 35 cars in this field. And the top five will advance to make the all-star race a 39-car field. And that will be the biggest all-star race we have had since season one. <clears throat> since after all, season one, it was the first all-star race where every driver that season got to compete. So when we're talking post-season one... This is going to be the biggest all-star race we have ever had. Pace car in the pit road. It's time to... Boogity, 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 go racing. <clears throat> Excuse me. Dylan Poteed leads the first lap of the day. <clears throat> As meanwhile, all the cars are running well in this pack. Although we got a four wide battle here, but luckily four wide works pretty well if you don't lean. <clears throat> it's five wide where it's impossible to make it work. <clears throat> four wide with Kyle Keith, Carson Gum, Mason Powers, Chris Michaels. Now it settles out to three wide. Back up at the front, a battle for the lead is ensuing as Joseph Strigley's trying to run by himself on the bottom and ain't really working too well, but now it's going to kick in with help from Matthew Dalio. And Joseph Strigley debuting a brand new paint scheme, the Gatorade Dodge Charger. <laughs> Excuse me. And he is, and both of his teammates from Richard Petty Motorsports are in the All-Star Race, Joshua Collard and Sean Galligan. <clears throat> now Matthew Dalio to the lead. Right now the top five that would advance to the All-Star Race would be Dalio, Charles Jackson who's up here, Michael Walton, Kyle Keith, and maybe Marco Martinez, because he's trying to get up there. 
Sorry about that. Because, like I said, it's going to be the top five that finish in this race that advance to the all-star race itself. Man, look how fast they're going. They're going 230 miles an hour. Let's see how fast they go down the straightaway. <laughs> About 231, so they are going really fast. Charles Jackson to the lead, but here comes Emmanuel Hartnett in the 84 trying to get up there himself. <clears throat> and also just a quick announcement. I know I originally had done the uh, sign-ups for the next season for Marvel Studios Cup Series. However, I decided I'm going to redo those sign-ups after All-Star Break is concluded. So tomorrow at uh, 5 o'clock Eastern Time, and that's in the afternoon, of course, will be the redo of the sign-ups for Season 11 Marvel Studios Cup Series. And what's going to be unique about next season is that for the first time ever, we're going to have part-time drivers. There will be five part-time rides next season as far as... Full-time full -time rides go, it'll be 45 full-time rides and five part-time rides, so... Or actually, no, it's 50 full-time rides, I completely forgot. And then five part-time rides, so... Next season's gonna be unique in that, uh... In that respect. <clears throat> Sorry about that, people. Anyways... Anthony Ritchie had the lead, but now it's three wide with Carson Scott and Austin Mongold. And Carson Scott <clears throat> is going up to the front. And when we come to the stripe, it'll be three laps to go. Here in the All-Star Open at Dragonette. Before we get to the All-Star Race itself, which will be 20 laps. Joseph Strigley now back up to the front. In that beautiful Gatorade car. <clears throat> With that stealth black base. And right behind him is William Duncan, who is now making his presence felt up here at the front. Dylan Pote trying to get back up there. Along with Marco Martinez, Johnny Gardner trying to get up there. Sean Henley in the 57 is working his way into the top five. <clears throat> I see uh, Jonathan Zorlin trying to do the same thing as it's two to go here at Dragonette for the open and Poteet leads and the rest of the top five that would be locked in right now would be Henley, Zorlin, Martinez and Hudson although contact with him and Gardner that could have been dangerous we could have had the big one happen right there <coughs> I apologize for that again as we're getting ready to come off of turn number four to take the white flag. And Poteet's got a big lead, which isn't really a good thing. White flag is out here in the All-Star Open at Dragonette. Poteet leads with Zorlin, Walton, Dalio, and Henley, the top five. But it's about to get shuffled up quite a good bit here in a moment's notice. <clears throat> Poteet's still hanging in strong up at the front, hanging on to that lead. So I think he's going to be a safe bet. Meanwhile, it's still the battle for the rest of the top five, but it looks like it's going to be good. Coming out of four for the final time in the All-Star Open. Dylan Poteet wins the All-Star Open, and the rest of the drivers that are in are Jonathan Zorlin, Michael Walton, Matthew Dalio and Charles Jackson all made it into the All-Star Race. <clears throat> what an exciting 10-lap shootout that was for the All-Star Open. Unbelievable. Well, let's look at the rest of the results. The rest of the top 10 was Anthony Ritchie. 
Angel Navarro, Kyle Keith, Nathan Hudson, <coughs> and Sean Henley. The rest of the top 20 <coughs> excuse me, was Mason Powers, Matt McIntyre, Chris Michaels, JT Bryant, Marco Martinez, <coughs> uh, Austin Mongold, Alex Ferranti, Caleb Farrell, Johnny Gardner, Joseph Strigley. The rest of the top 30 was James Richardson, William Brock, James Shelley, uh, Emmanuel Hartnett, Carson Scott, Tanner Sullivan, Carson Gum, Brandon Gonzalez, and Kev Shearer. And then the rest of the field that finished were Nick Alton, Benjamin Miles, Stephen Guerrero, Connor Morgan, and Dougie Shears. So that does it for our coverage here today for All-Star Open, but stay tuned in the rest of the video. It will be the All-Star Race. Welcome back to All-Star Break coverage as we get set for the 20-lap All-Star Race itself. And just as a reminder, John Arndt won the fan vote to race in the All-Star Race, so that's why... <coughs> excuse me. Why he did not run the All-Star Open. It's not a requirement. The five that made it in from the Open were Dylan Poteet, Charles Jackson... Jonathan Zorlin, Michael Walton, <coughs> excuse me, and Matthew Dalio. So, let's take a look at how the lineup looks. Starting in the last row is Chris Washer. Top 10, Chase Oliver on the pole. Starting next to him is PJ Williams. Row 2 is Dylan Young and Dylan Thoreau. Row 3, Jonathan Zorlin, Jessica Shelton. Row 4, Austin LaPlante and Jake Baskinger. And then row 5, Dylan Poteet and Devin Becker. So with that said, let's go ahead and get the command to fire engines for the All-Star Race. <clears throat> Excuse me. Drivers, start your engines. And Ellen DeGeneres returns to haunt me forever. Excuse me. Cars are off and rolling to get set for the half pace lap to take the green flag. 20 laps of racing, so double the time from the open, but still no cautions. So if you crash, you crash, and that's that. So this is demo derby style all star racing here at Dragonette. <clears throat> Pace car in the pit road, and it's time to boogity 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 go racing. Austin LaPlante leads the first lap <clears throat> of the All-Star Race. And already up here to the front is the All-Star Open winner, Dylan Poti, trying to sweep both events already. And look at this camera shot from spectator view. David Rivera now to the front, but now here comes Preston Plourd. Preston Plourd in the 41, the, num the uh, season 6 champion here in this race, and then he leads that lap. David Rivera, the season 7 champion, is up here. 
Michael Norman, Trent Dunham are all getting up here to the front. Zach Flickinger in the 38s getting up there with help from Jesse Setti. As they are four wide, quite a couple of rows back. But luckily, this track is pretty roomy, so they can make it work. Just as long as they don't lean, they should be fine. As we look around the racetrack to see what is happening. Oh, and we got a crash! <clears throat> oh, but they somehow save it. Dorian Face Puncher, Jonathan Zorlin, Matt Schoenberger. All involved, but they're still going on the track. But they did fall off the main pack. Chris Washer's kind of suffering the same fate. Preston Plord still leads as a battle for second is happening. Points leader coming into the race, Pichu London, with James McLeod right next to him. As you saw off of turn four, it was the skid marks and uh, marks into the wall from that crash. As we've got uh, a lot of cars up here in the main pack, although these guys from James Qualls on back have kind of lost the main pack a little bit, but they're still pretty close, so they can still catch back up and still be in contention. Qualls, Becker, Keys, Acosta, Sheldon, and Sanford all running in the very back of the pack. Jonathan Zorlin coming into pit road. Maybe the damage he sustained might be too much for him. <clears throat> Let's see if he's actually going to put the car over the wall or not. Let's see. Now he's going to continue. Maybe he's just in there to repair the damage. Back up at the front, Preston Plort has been keeping that lead ever since he got it. Like, nobody's really been going, been able to go by him at all after Plort got the lead. Battle for second continues with Pichu London and Michael Norman this time. DJ Curtis is now in the picture. PJ Williams, Kyle Matthews all up there. And then it's separated back to David Rivera. As Rivera, along with the rest of the drivers, up here in the pack, battling. And then it's Chris Washer, Dorian Face Puncher, Matt Schoenberger, and Jonathan Zorlin, who is a lap down as a result of uh, <clears throat> having to come into pit road. As we continue to look around the field and see what's happening, <clears throat> things are getting pretty dicey as we're coming approaching the halfway point of the race. David Rivera trying to get second from DJ Curtis. And David Rivera with a help with help from James McLeod is gonna get the low line to work to make a move by Preston Plord. And now Rivera is up to the front again. But now here comes James McLeod with help from Jesse Setti, Seth Cole, James Qualls, Pichu London all up here trying to get to the front. Things are getting really dicey, like I've said. And we are a lap away from halfway through this, this important race. Trent Dunham right now, the last car in the pack, but he's still in there. New leader Jesse Setti to the front, but Pichu London trying to get a run <clears throat> and try to get to the lead. And Pichu London is the points leader heading into this race as well as next week at Charlotte. 
when we get back to points racing. And right now, Petru London leads the way. Austin LaPlante up to second, but now Preston Bloor trying to get back to the lead. And he's got a run on the inside. Looking on throughout the field to keep an eye on things. Trent Dunham starting to lose the main draft. But the leaders are going to be catching up to those slower machines of Schoenberger, Zorlin, and Face Puncher. That's going to cause quite the ruckus. <clears throat> Once they catch him. And Preston Plord going to utilize the high lane to get by. Whoa, Schoenberger about caused a wreck right there. Top two of Dalio and Plord split Jonathan Zorlin. Cody Lamas is up here, so that helped make it a three-car breakaway. But now here comes everybody else back to the uh, back bumper of uh, Cody Lamas and now maybe going by him. But Matt Schoenberger causing some uh, issues for the guys up in the high lane like Dylan Young and Jesse Setti and them. And that actually did help bring Trent Dunham back up into the main draft. But now it's going to be kind of spread out just a little bit. Oh, and there goes, holy cow, that was a vicious crash. John Art and Tim Walsh crash unbelievably hard and... Walsh going for a wild slide down the back stretch and finally comes to rest on all four wheels. That was a hard hit for both of them. That was incredibly hard. Preston Plord still leads. <clears throat> Holy cow. I, I just hope those guys are okay. That was a pretty vicious crash. Right here in the off of uh, getting ready to come off of turn two was when that madness took place. And as a result, these guys from uh, Austin LaPlante on back to Jesse Setti have all lost the main pack. Jessica Sheldon is like the bridge between the main pack and that second group. And then it's, yeah, it's like after all the. That mess with uh, those lap machines or slower machines caused a lot of separation among that lead draft. So now it might end up coming down to just very few cars, depending on if they can get bunched up enough to work in a draft formation to get around the top uh, few cars in order to win this race or get a good run. <clears throat> Jake Baskinger trying to get second place from uh, Cody Lamas. Close out the line, but Baskinger got the position. And now he clears him. And Baskinger's now got a run on the 41. Baskinger, who won earlier this season, if I recall, I believe it was uh, Martinsville that he'd won. Now trying to get his first all-star race win. And he's got a run underneath the 41 and might clear him off of four. And he does. Uh, does he get clear enough yet? Now he's clear. But now Preston Plord going for the crossover to go by the 54 this time around as it's less than four laps to go. Three wide for second with Dalio, Rivera, and Baskinger, but now Dalio takes that position. As we continue to look around the field to see what is happening. When we come to the stripe, there will be three laps to go here in the All-Star Race. Preston Plord has been the dominant car all day so far. But it ain't over yet for a lot of these guys up here in the top ten or so. Here comes DJ Curtis with a run underneath of Matthew Dalio for second. Whoa, some leaning going on with Baskinger 
and Rivera and Baskin Jerry about got turned by Galligan. But they're going to catch Chris Washer, who isn't slow or damaged. He just lost a draft and now is about to get lapped. Could this help guys like DJ Curtis? Two to go here at Dragonette for the All-Star Race. DJ Curtis got a run. Joshua Collar trying to get up there. Same with Pichu London, Jake Baskinger, among many others who are trying their hardest to try and win this race. <clears throat> DJ Curtis slowly but surely catching the 41. Though he's going to have to get a little bit of a draft help from Pichu London or somebody in order to make a move on that 41. Otherwise, the 41 is going to end up winning this race. Off of four... They're going to take the white flag, but they are catching Matt Schoenberger. This could cause more friction up here at the front, depending on what the 80 does. And he's going to hold up the 41! He held up the 41! Jake Baskinger now to the back bumper of the of the 41 of Preston Plord. Is he going to make a move? I don't... Well, here he comes. But it's going to be, oh, and man, it was nearly three wide for the lead with Collard getting help from his teammate, Galligan. But Jake Baskinger is there and has cleared the 41 as we're getting ready to come off of turn four. And what was a crazy finish? Jake Baskinger wins the All-Star Race here for the 10th season of Walmart Cup here at Dragonette. What a finish. The 54 of Jake Baskinger wins the All-Star Race here at Dragonette. So he is pretty much locked into All-Star Races for a long time. And what was a great pass on the last lap in turn three. And managed to keep the lead and win. But let's look at the rest of the results. The rest of the top five was Joshua Collard, Sean Galligan, Preston Plord, John Cittadino. The rest of the top ten was Matthew Dalio, Anthony McCrory, Michael Norman, Devin Becker, and points leader Pichu London. The rest of the top 20 was Dylan Pote, who tried to go for two in a row this time around for All-Star break, but didn't quite get it done. James McLeod, Dylan Young, Charles Jackson, Ryan Acosta, David Rivera, Michael Walton, Chase Oliver, Cody Lamas, Zach Flickinger. Rest of the top 30 was uh, <clears throat> PJ Williams, Dylan Thoreau, DJ Curtis, Zach Rogers, Blaine Keyes, Charles Sanford, Jesse Setti, Seth Cole, Trent Dunham, Kyle Matthews. Rest of the lead lap cars were James Qualls, Austin LaPlante, and Jessica Sheldon. The next four cars finished a lap or more down. Chris Washer, Dorian Facepuncher, Matt Schoenberger, Jonathan Zorlin. And then the only two cars that were out of the race after that crazy crash were John Arndt and Tim Walsh. So that does it for our coverage tonight here for All-Star Break. Thank you guys for watching here at Dragonette, but next week we return to points racing as we get set for the Coca-Cola 600 at Charlotte. That's going to be quite the race, but until then, here are your, here are your final results of the All-Star Race. See you at Charlotte, for this is Levi McIntyre, signing off.